This is the start of side two. And we now return to local news with Joan, who will start with sports news. And I start with hockey. Table topping Southgate came from behind twice on their way to securing a 5-2 victory at home to Bromley and Beckenham in the Conference East of the English Hockey League on Saturday. Nicholas Blewett put the visitors ahead and after John Sterlini equalised, Matthew Gunnell restored Bromley's advantage early in the second half. But Southgate then took control with Rick Gay, two, Sir Lini and George Scott all finding the net in a 20-minute spell to give them both a comfortable win. Southgate visit third-placed Teddington, who lie four points behind them in the table on Sunday. Steve Newing has been sacked by Enfield Town but believes he has left the Towners in a much better position after four and a half years in charge. Newing, who was appointed manager in May 2009, and coach James Dale both departed on Thursday with the Enfield board stating a change was required following the club's poor Ryman Premier form. During his time at Enfield, Newing helped the club secure promotion from the Ryman North and kept them in the Premier Division last season. While he accepts the town as form has not been good enough during the current campaign, he felt capable of turning around their fortunes. Newing is disappointed to leave Enfield, but says he loved his time at the club and has no regrets. The board have done what they think is best for the club, and I understand that, Newing said. Obviously, I think I would have turned it around and I was planning to get new players in on work experience until I was told I was leaving. Those players will not be coming to the club anymore, though. He continued, I know I am leaving the club in a much better position than when I joined, and that makes me pleased. Former British women's number one, Elena Baltacha, has announced her retirement from tennis. The 30-year-old, who was previously based in Enfield, claimed 11 singles titles during her career and made the third round of Wimbledon in 2002. Baltacha, who also reached the third round of the Australian Open in 2005 and 2010, achieved a career-high ranking of 49 in 2010. However, injuries and illness have proved difficult to overcome and Baltacha said it's time to begin a new phase of her life. My body has taken such a bruising over the last 16 years, and that's finally taken its toll, she told BBC Sport. I've had some amazing experiences through playing tennis, some incredible highs and some very low lows, and I wouldn't change any of them. But now my mind and my body are telling me it's time to move on to a new phase of my life. I have a sports item. The Enfield Ignatians players, young and old, will have the opportunity to play at Saracens Alliance Park as part of the big club day out. The event on Saturday, March the 1st, has been described as the biggest in the club's history. It will see teams ranging from the minis to the seniors play 12 hours of back-to-back rugby at the men in Black's home ground. The climax of the 12-hour rugby-a-thon will be a floodlit London 2 North East League clash between the Ignatians first team and Saffron Walden. Harold Pritchard, Ignatians youth chairman, said, this will mean that every single one of the 500 players in the club, ranging from 4 to 64, will get a game against different opposition. This will be the biggest event our club has ever organised, and it's a massive exercise in logistics. For example... In order to meet the demands of a demanding schedule, the first game will kick off at 9.30am, which will be the prelude to 12 hours back-to-back rugby. 
One of the fundamentals is that each game will be readily supported by family, friends and supporters. And one of the stipulations, at least as far as the youth opposition are concerned, is that they need to bring at least two coach loads of a hundred supporters to the game. Ignatians are no strangers to Alliance Park. In February, they staged two youth games at the ground, including a Colts fixture. Fairview New Homes will sponsor the event, and although it isn't designed to be a money-making exercise, it is hoped it will raise the club's profile. Now we go to What's On, and What's On at the Millfield Theatre. We are told it's the spectacular family pantomime adventure with Steve Wickenden as Sarah the Cook, Alex Scott Farley as King Rat, Greg Castiglione as Muddles, Dick Whittington is a lovely picture of a rather f well fat, well, very fat cat actually, with a green hat on, and it tells you that it's on from the 28th of November 2013, to the 4th of January, 2014. And then there's a picture of four of the participants and no, more, no further information about them. So you have to go to the Middle, Millfield Theatre, Edmonton, sometime between the 28th of November and the 4th of January, if you want to see them all. Enjoy it. And now for another pantomime on at the Dugdale Centre in Enfield Town. And it's, it isn't Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, it's Flo White and the Seven Dogs, D-A-W-G-S, whoever they are. But it looks a fun panto to me, um, looking at a very colourful advert here. And it's on at Saturday the 14th of December until Sunday the 5th of January. The box office number is 020-8807-6680 and the uh, website um, address is www.dugdalecentre, all in one word, .co.uk, all in low case. And the tickets, okay, they're 15 and £10. Side seats are £13 and eight pounds you can also do it online as i said and the tickets are 14 pounds and nine pounds and they are oh, and the side seats are 12 pounds and seven pounds it looks a fun panto to me anyway and uh now for some uh, more pantomime. The London Pantomimers present their 68th family pantomime and that's in association with the Scouts and in support of the Royal Marsden Cancer Charity. And the pantomime is Jack and the Beanstalk and it's at the Intimate Theatre in Green Lanes, Palmer's Green and it's on from Thursday the 5th of December to Saturday the 14th of December 2013 and there's no performance on Monday the 9th of December. So for performance times, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, Fridays, the performance starts at 7.30. On Saturdays, there's a performance at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and 5 o'clock in the evening. And then on Sunday, there's one performance at 2.30. If you'd like some more information, you can call the box office on 07972 404 187 or you can visit their website, which is www the London Pantomimers dot org dot UK and I have a what's on Children's International Voices they are giving a Christmas concert at the Dugdale Centre and it's on Saturday the 7th of December at 7pm Sunday the 8th of December at 3pm there is great excitement in the choirs of Children's International Voices of Enfield. Five choirs aged 4 to 24 who rehearse in Palmer's Green on alternate Sundays. They are looking forward to their fourth Christmas celebration concert in the Dugdale Theatre. This year they will perform a splendid work, A New Star, 
by the Welsh composer Gareth Glynn and of course many favourite Christmas carols. Tickets are from the Dugdale box office which is on 0208 807 6680 that's 0208 807 6680 or www.childrensinternationalvoices that's all one word dot co dot uk and the tickets are ten pounds for adults and five pounds for children now i come to a letter sent from mr m d cox pentridge avenue enfield David Burroughs speaks up in defence of Chase Farm Hospital on February the 21st, 2007. The Academy of Medical Royal Colleges made the point that bigger is not necessarily better and pointed to the risks for those living in remote areas if emergency services are concentrated in fewer hospital sites. Lack of mobility transport and services in Chesant means that access is a real problem for those in Enfield and beyond. All that that I've just read is in inverted commas. And the next part explains who it is that's saying it, I think. MP asks Prime Minister to save A&E. That was June the 27th, 2007. MP David Burroughs raised with Prime Minister Tony Blair the issue of plans to downgrade Chase Farms A&E and maternity services. The PM endorsed Sir George Alberti's plan to downgrade both. It was an historic occasion where I wanted to ensure that Chase Farms A&E and consultant-led maternity services have a future and are not consigned to history. I am opposing the plans to cut A&D services at Chase Farm Hospital. I am firmly against plans to downgrade our local A&E. It can only lead to a diminished service for my constituents. The PM added that hospital managers had not learned that merging and centralisation provides a less responsive and effective service. Local patients should not have to pay the consequences of government and management failures by losing our A&D. I have seen firsthand with my family the life-saving value of A&D. A transfer of the emergency services to Barnet is unacceptable and will put patient safety at risk. The next piece of information says that the Council will have moved for judicial review, which will be challenged. Then it goes on to say... He forgets past words about mobility for those in Enfield and beyond. Local people being listened to and the first-hand importance he found, A and E, at a personal level. Now, most of that are quotations said by various people in 2007. And now a letter from Kate Wilkinson and Kieran McGregor on behalf of the Save Chase Farm group. In less than a month, Chase Farm Hospital will have lost its accident and emergency and consultant-led women, children's and maternity departments, as well as vital supporting services such as the intensive care unit, despite nearly a decade of opposition. The Save Chase Farm Group would like to pay tribute to everyone who has marched, voted, signed petitions and sung and who will continue to attend health scrutiny meetings. We all owe our thanks to Enfield Council, which last week presented a very thorough and robust legal challenge in another attempt to prevent these closures. The hearing lasted for two days 
Secretary of State for Health Jeremy Hunt sent his own barrister, along with four others, including Boris Johnson's wife, to ensure that this case is not brought before the courts again. That being, quotes, ensure that this case is not brought before the courts again. The barrister acting for the council highlighted in detail the years of countless broken promises that have been made to Enfield. The four new health centres improved access to GP services, additional funding for primary and community services that were required as a matter of urgency back in 2008, to mention but a few. Sadly, all this fell on deaf ears, and the judge chose instead to listen to a version of history we did not recognise, stated by the other side. The Save Chase Farm Group will continue to closely monitor healthcare provision across the borough to try to ensure that Enfield holds on to what remains. And now a letter from Mrs E. Lamb in Tinton Road, Wood Green. I wish to say a very big thank you to all the staff at Chase Farm Hospital. All the staff in the Napier Ward made my husband's stay a truly fantastic experience. Every aspect of the hospital was perfect and the wards were clean. The helpful staff couldn't do enough for my husband, who was rushed to Chase Farm Hospital when they were very busy. The paramedics who came to the house said that Gerard's oxygen levels were low and he had a possible clot in one of his lungs. A lot of people... Do not want wards at Chase Horn Hospital, Hospital to close, and neither do we. We will be truly saddened when the closure happens. And I have a letter from G.A. Musey of Mitchell Road, Palmer's Green. The Mayor of, for London has said the North Circular Road is the most polluted road in London, and Enfield's Air Quality Action Plan confirms this. A parliamentary committee concluded that the UK's poor air quality was a bigger killer than passive smoking, road traffic accidents and obesity, and could be responsible for 50,000 premature deaths a year. Poor air quality is caused by many things, but the main cause is road traffic, made worse when it is congested. Therefore, in view of the Mayor's concern, I expect him to do all he can to reduce or eliminate congestion. Unfortunately, he has authorised a new bus lane between Chequers Way and Green Lanes N13, which is now causing persistent congestion on the road. Transport for London say it is necessary for 15 buses an hour to save four to five minutes journey time. So we now have a ludicrous situation where a bus lane with a few buses c compels 75,000 vehicles a day to, complete, to compete for space on two adjoining traffic lanes. TFL have been asked to remove it on grounds of air quality, but they are determined to keep it for the benefit of their passengers. Many bus lanes reduce road width and cause traffic congestion and poorer air quality. The question to be resolved is, what is more important, quick bus travel or cleaner air? A pop-up shop in Palmer's Green is selling Christmas cards to raise money for different charities. The Cards for Good Causes stall was opened last month at Palmer's Green United Reformed Church by Monty Meth, president of the Enfield Over 50s Forum, and is selling more than 200 different designs of cards. Church members started selling cards 20 years ago and have continued raising money for charity every year since, building up a regular customer base. Diana Goforth, manager of the pop-up shop, said, We get a variety of visitors every year, but often the same people will return. One woman who lives in Cuffley told me she comes back every year. The group of volunteers do their best to advertise the shop. Mrs Goforth said, the shop is sort of in the middle of nowhere, 
so we hand out flyers and posters around the community to make sure as many people are aware of it as possible. Festive shoppers can also buy other Christmas gifts and items, including wrapping paper and decorations. The UK's largest multi-charity Christmas card organisation, Cards for Good Causes, has been running since 1964 and will pay 70 pence from every pound made to 29 local and national charities, including the North London Hospice, which has branches in Winchmore Hill and North Finchley. Liz Florn, regional organiser for Cards for Good Causes, said, You are buying once, but giving twice, and you cannot put an email on the mantelpiece or get some warm feeling, as when you do when you open a Christmas card. The stall is running from 10am to 4pm on Monday to Saturday at the church, in Burford Gardens, until December the 10th. Cards will also be sold at the Dugdale Centre in London Road, Enfield Town, for three Saturdays, starting this weekend between noon and 2 p.m. A school has celebrated the rich culture of its pupils by encouraging, encouraging them to explore their heritage. George Spicer Primary School in Southbury Road, Enfield, has more than 400 pupils and commemorated its diversity with a culture week. Pupils of the school were encouraged to go back to their roots to learn more about where they came from. Last Friday, the school was awash with colours as pupils dressed up in traditional clothing from their country or simply the colours of their country's flag. The afternoon saw children guess which country their friends were from and learn parts of a different language, from Welsh to Turkish. Teacher Christine Wilkins Malloy believes that diversity is something that should be embraced by all schools. She said it's really important to have weeks like this because we are a multicultural society now. People need to understand we are all together being British and we can respect and enjoy each other's differences. We have been learning games, songs and dances from different cultures in our classrooms. Children have been investigating into many different countries and going back to their roots. The school has also gained its UN Charter for the Rights of the Child Level 1, demonstrating its awareness to the diversity of school and its pupils. One of the oldest trees in the country has been cut back in a bid to stop it from dying. Older than the Magna Carta, the 800-year-old Minchinden Oak in Southgate once stood in the ancient forest in Middlesex, but is now perilously close to death. The Friends of Minchinden Oak Garden are now working with Enfield Borough Council to save the gargantuan tree in Waterfall Road. The group's secretary, Chris Horner, described the oak as a hidden gem. He said, This is a beautiful tree, and not something everyone knows about. As one of the oldest trees around, cranes have been brought in to help remove some of the heavy branches to stop the tree from blowing over. It has recently subsided due to its size, and experts found internal decay had made the huge tree hollow, leaving it at risk of toppling over in gale force winds. On Tuesday, November 12th, numerous heavy limbs from the 18 metre tall tree were removed in a bid to save it. The tree surgeons also administered slow-release chemicals to encourage root development. Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for Environment, Councillor Chris Bond, said, Enfield Council had carried out extensive works over the years to protect and nurture this historic oak, but it has now become apparent that we need to take further steps to protect this tree and prevent it from falling over, potentially endangering people and property nearby. Our primary objective is to save this fantastic natural monument which predates the Magna Carta. Doing nothing is not an option because unless we take decisive action, this historic and much-loved tree will fall over. If that were to happen, then it would cause extensive damage to the park and potentially damage nearby homes. The action we are proposing, while drastic, gives the tree a good chance of recovery and means that future generations can enjoy it for years to come. 
Edmonton MP Andy Love has raised concerns about postal deliveries in his constituency after Royal Mail revised its routes. The company has started using new delivery methods and different delivery routes. The changes could result in some households receiving their postage much later than current times, and with Christmas on the horizon, times could vary. Mr Love, who recently held a local campaign against the privatisation of Royal Mail, believes the latest alterations could be significant. He said, I know how important the daily delivery service is for constituents. I worry that more areas of Edmonton will receive a below-standard postal service due to the government's decision to privatise our Royal Mail. The Edmonton MP has written to Royal Mail Chief Executive Moya Green to ask her to reassure people in Lower Edmonton they will still receive a high standard of postal delivery. A salon has been given a five-star rating for its standard of hairdressing. Million Hairs in Chase Side Southgate was granted the award by the Good Salon Guide, which rigorously examines salons up and down the country. Salon owner Andy Andreu said... The Good Salon Guide is the long-awaited measure that enables clients to know their hairdresser is a true professional. With a team of ten, the salon has been in the borough for two years, and manager Dimitri Jones is beaming with pride. He said, Being a part of a young salon and being able to play a part in being given the five-star rating has really made me proud of the team and all the hard work that has been put in. Dawson Penn, chairman of the Good Salon Guide, said, The Good Salon Guide highlights the professional status of hairdressers and will ensure that clients can have confidence in their choice. We have reached the end of our programme for this week. Thank you for listening. So from the team of... Joan, Beverly, Rod and myself, Lillian, with Cassandra and Colin on controls, it's goodbye. Bye-bye. Cheerio. Please remember to turn over the address label in your postal packet and return it to us as soon as possible in readiness for the next edition. The Enfield Talking newspaper will be with you again in one week's time.